All right, what is going on everyone? It feels great to be back. If you're new here, welcome in. My name is Gerardo. We're gonna be talking about Hex in this video and more specifically looking at the idea that it looks ready for a breakout. So leave a thumbs up, subscribe, all that good stuff if you like this quantitative hybrid technical analysis on Hex, Pulse Chain, and more. We're almost at 8,000 subscribers, so thank you guys so much. Road to 10K before end of the year is seeming more and more likely every single day. You guys are crushing it with the engagement on our most recent video, Hex $1 Incoming. You guys ran it up to over 1,000 likes, which is the first time I've ever gotten that in a video. Absolutely insane how far we've come, right, as a community since I started making videos just back in April. And someone pointed out in my most recent video that I said, you know, I wish I'd made videos earlier. Um, but now I'm realizing, hey, there's still a long, a long journey ahead of us. So um, all in its own time. But here we are looking at this idea that we could be ready for a breakout. Why do I say that? For a few reasons. Well, you can interpret this formation here a few ways. Right? It's a little noisy with the wicks, but you could say this is a flat top, right? I could see that argument being valid. You have your flat top around, um, let's say we can say like 48 cents or so because that's where this candle closed. Our all time high candle was 48.4 cents, right? That's, if we close the candle above that, then it'll be our highest candle close ever, which can be more visually expressed by using a line chart. So let's get rid of these moving averages real quick. And with a line chart, you get rid of wick data and you can more clearly see that we have an uptrend, right? We have a high, we have a, um, we have our low and then we have our higher high compared to that previous one. We have our higher low. Now, what, what we're forming here is sort of a, uh, I want to call it a pennant, but it looks almost like a symmetrical triangle formation, right? Um, it's, it can be considered a bull flag, right? Which is, it just kind of range bound, a flat range. Or you could consider this again, an ascending triangle if you just look at the candle bodies. However, they more or less have this exact same target. So all you really have to do to get your target for something like this is, and I'll explain what these lines are earlier. I forgot I had them there, but for now, just look at the pole that we're drawing here, right? We'll draw it in white to distinguish. So we have our pole. All you have to do is place your, let's place it at 48 cents or so, our flat top, right? And some could argue it could go as high as uh, 53 cents because we had wicks up to here. So you have a little bit of margin for interpretation there. So let me actually get rid of these for a second. If we were to break above this decisively and have a sort of impulsive move to the upside, in my opinion, we could be seeing something like this pull playing out up here. Someone asked me why when I drag the line, it changes angle. The reason for that is because it's on a log chart and you're simply adding the same amount. But since a log chart goes by 10 X increments, if you add the same amount, then it will diminish, right? Uh, that's what a linear chart is for, if you want it to be equidistant through uh, addition. But ranting on that end, you can see that if we break our flat top of 48 cents and have a decisive impulsive move to the upside, then our technical target, like I said in the previous video, is a dollar. And if we double our technical target like we have in the past a few times, plenty of times actually, then we could be looking at one to two dollars. Now, one of the reasons that is not only uh, amazing, first of all, from a technical te standpoint here, just with a TA, another reason is because if we look at our hex versus Ethereum extension from regression rainbow fit, you see where we are now. And in a previous video, I said, hey, the most bullish thing, and I said this around here or something, I said the most bullish thing right now is probably going sideways. Why? Because we needed to form market structure. Something that just goes straight up without stopping becomes unsustainable. I mean, just look at the Bitcoin chart, right? It went from like, think that, think of 2019 Bitcoin when it just went from like three or 4K straight to 14 and it didn't care about that like 6K bottom or anything. Some of you guys might be too new to remember that, but there are some occasions like even the most recent rally when R March 2020 crashed down to like 4K and then it just ran straight to 65K without really care, like t even testing the 20, uh, I think it only tested the 20 week moving average once around 10K and then just whoosh, ran off to 65K. So I went on a rant there. Um, 
damn, I, I forgot what I was, I was talking about. One to two dollars, hex versus ETH, regression rainbow, going sideways. Um, the reason why that's bullish, market structure. Uh, oh yeah, if we just go straight up, you see what happens, right? Like that 14K peak just came crashing down to like 6K and that 65K peak clearly came as low as like 28K and is now, um, you know, it's having a sort of dead cat bounce. Let me turn this light down. It's getting a little warm. Oh, much better. So much better. Oof. And this hoodie too. I forgot to mention, you guys are probably wondering, this is the, one of the first samples of the Look Into Hex merch. Right, you can see in the background, we also have a decorative pillow, right? Uh, supernova decorative pillow. Not only, we have some other cool stuff too. I posted the picture of the Supernova Hex mug on Twitter. So go follow me on there, twitter.com forward slash G-R-A-W-R-D-O-G, uh, Gerard Dog, the W in between uh, the A and the R, the A and the second R. Um, point being, yeah, we have some merch samples are pretty cool. I love this hoodie. I call it the asymmetry hoodie because we have the uh, the heat map on the right on the right where it starts at the very bottom here and it just goes vertical into your into your tricep sort of into the shoulder um, and this was this is September data right obviously it's gonna keep keep going but um, I don't know this is pretty cool this is like the we can call this the the Q4 2021 asymmetry hoodie and then as time goes on, Oh, it would be cool to be able to like extend it, but the the actual spot where you're able to put like a sleeve, it ends like right here. Um, but yeah, I mean, we could do some cool things. I have the shop all open and or ready. I haven't launched it yet, but if you guys want, I'll set up. I'll put a poll on Twitter if you guys want me to open up the shop. We have. Um, you can skip through this, by the way, if you're not interested in in the merch. But just wanted to. Yeah, let's get back into focus. There we are. Um, yeah, we have the hoodie. We also have backpack, looking X backpack. Something pretty cool about this is the way I designed it is if you open up the front pocket, you have a secret chart. I don't know if you guys can see it. Let me see. I can pull it up. It's hard to see, but if you open up, you have a secret chart in here. <laughs> and it's the the rare log log regression rainbow. And uh, you guys can't see it there, but it curves up into the, this is the most terrible product review ever. Yeah, I'm gonna have to take some pictures and show you guys. Um, but yeah, this is, the, this is the backpack. It's pretty, pretty sturdy. You can, put, you can put all your stuff in there. You can put your, your wallet, put your books, your books in there on how to optimize your taxes and whatnot. But let's get back to the charts. Uh, yeah, technical target one to two dollars on the technical side of things, on the regression rainbow side of things, hex versus ETH extension from FIT. You see that it converges with this thesis, so to speak, because if our technical target is one to two dollars, remember that this peak here, if we were to reach pink in October, like this fractal is saying we could, that would correspond to about two dollars. So $2 hex in October is not out of the question uh, completely. Just definitely wanted to point that out. So that's sort of a next few months kind of an analysis. But what's going to happen in the short term? Well, the title of this video is we're ready for a breakout. Doesn't necessarily mean uh, we're going to break out like right now or tomorrow. The reason I say that is because if you were to consider this to be a, you know, a flat top, then you could say, okay, we've tested it once twice and if your flat top is down here you could say we tested it three times already and you know that the more times a level is tested the more likely it is to break and this is a bullish version of that so in my opinion we've we've had all the check marks necessary to have an impulsive move for the upside now again i have no clue i don't know what's going to happen that's just what i'm seeing in the charts uh, this is one of the mo more bullish formations i've seen because we've seen falling parallel channels in the past right but when we see ascending triangles, oof, I mean, those generally speaking, I'm pretty sure I can only think of one ascending triangle in all of Hex's history that did not break to the upside. And that was like right before big payday. So it had a, a really strong fundamental reason why. Uh, so ugh, ascending triangles are, I, I like them personally. Now, another check mark I want to point out is the fact that we tested our 
20 day MA, 21 day EMA ribbon that we like to talk about saying when we go beneath it, historically speaking, great buying opportunity like over here, over here and so on. You can go back in time to see multiple occasions where that was the case and we've tested it, right? We almost came down to it here and then we tested it here a few times and now we're actually testing it again, sitting around the low 40s, like 40 to 43 cents, currently sitting around 44 cents. So I wouldn't be surprised to see maybe another test and then something like this play out, some support, and then we rally to the upside into October. And think about it, there's a really, a really easy narrative to drive us into the dollar to dollar region. And that's the pulse launch, right? So I guess with testnet being so close, if we get, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens when we get the testnet news. Like if testnet goes live and we have, you know, weak, weak action, and Hex just goes like, eh, then maybe it's, maybe it's not going to be as impulsive as we think, right? Maybe it, it just hits a dollar, not $2, or maybe it doesn't even hit a dollar, right? Maybe it's less bullish than I'm saying now. Um, but if, you know, Pulse Chain testnet announcement is made and this thing goes berserk, then you say, okay, there's a lot of strength here and the narrative is strong to, to buy and hold Hex. As if it weren't strong enough and as if the design weren't strong enough already, well, there you go. Now you even have a, a narrative to go along with it. So the reason I had this yellow stuff going on, I should probably point that out because I see a little fractal, okay? I don't know how many people have caught it, but you need to pull up the RSI to see this fractal. And let me redraw what I had going on for you here. Just, just a little something like this. Nothing too complicated. What am I talking about? Well, back in May, we saw divergence. We saw bearish divergence, and that happens when you see it on tops, right? On local maxima, known as tops, peaks. For example, May 13th peak around six and a half pennies, had a bearish divergence on the RSI with this peak around 10 pennies in June, right? Higher highs on price, lower highs on RSI. At the same time, if you see a divergence on the minima, that's a hidden bullish. So we saw it happen all the way from here, right? This wick down to two pennies, um, and then a higher high in price over here, but lower highs in RSI and so on, up to the point where RSI had cooled off, you know, almost 50% more at seven cents than it was at two cents. So that's what I personally like to call buoyancy. It's the fact that you've cooled down even more at a higher baseline. It's just super powerful. It speaks to your floor going up if you want to kind of frame it like like that, like the, the floor is rising. And that's a powerful thing. And the reason I'm pointing it out is because it's playing out in a similar way here in September, where you see this divergence, you see these divergences on the maxima, but at the same time, you see hidden bullish divergence on the minima, right? where currently we saw the RSI cool down at 40 cents, much more than it had been at 22 cents. So I like to see that because it gives RSI more room to move up if we were to see an impulsive move to the upside like we're expecting. And if this were to be a perfect fractal of what played out back here, then you can clearly see we had this top, which would correspond to this one. Um, more likely this double test might correspond to something like this. And you could argue maybe we're in this region over here where let's just play a little fractal to have fun. I actually haven't done this. Uh, so we'll, we'll both see what happens here. But let's just say something like this, right? After the peak, you see some consolidation around your 20 day or 21 day uh, moving averages on the daily until it's just the pressure becomes too much, right? Where it tightens so much and we just blast it to the upside maybe bring a retest back down to the 50 cent region. Yeah, this is a perfect example. Like if we came up, blast it out of this region into say 80 cents and then came back down to test 50 as support, I would be the most bullish person in the room. And then something similar to what happened over here, very bullish formation, finding support on previous resistance just gave you that other leg up to the upside to the potential one to $2 region. This one says in November, but we know anywhere from October, November is game for one to $2 region, especially if it plays out like our um, hex versus ETH regression rainbow did. And you can check this out on lookindhex.com. So I only have a few more charts here for you. 
uh, this moving average channel I like to look at. We've pointed it out how once we've gone under it or into it, it's generally been a very bullish sign. For example, if we say, okay, after big payday, is this the case? And yeah, yeah, it is. You see that this region historically was a good buying opportunity. So was this region beneath the moving average channel once again. And then every time it's gone into it or beneath it lately has been a great buying opportunity. And look at where we are now. We tapped it and we are currently in it. The lower bound is again about 40 cents, which is probably, it would probably be strong support given that was our most recent uh, little bottom over here at about 40 cents. So this has been historically strong support, right? And who's not to say we don't, again, just consolidate a little longer, the pressure becomes too much, and then we just blast out to the upside because the trend is clear, excuse me, higher highs and higher lows when you can't deny it. So that's pretty much everything I wanted to cover in this video. Like I said, let me know if you guys want me to open up the shop. I'll, I'll give you guys the link right now. It's lookintohex.shop. Acquired the domain, built out the Shopify site and everything. It's locked with a password right now. Um, I could give you guys the password if you want, but I want to get a general consensus that, you know, get the green light that you guys actually, you know, you guys actually dig it. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to cover in this video. Let me know what you guys think. I appreciate you watching. It feels so good to be back. I love making videos, but like I said on Twitter, I like making them when I feel good, right? And I don't want to change that. Uh, I don't want it to feel like, uh, I have to make a video because that, that just kind of ruins the, the reason we started doing this, right? So again, appreciate you watching. Subscribe if you're new. Let's get to 8,000 subscribers. You guys are nuts with the engagement. Uh, thank you for all of the support. Check out the Telegram group. We added like 50 or more members today. 50, 60 members to t.me forward slash look into hex. Some great discussions in there. I dropped a 10 minute voice message rant on the whole the whole circulating supply figures and all of that drama. Uh, so if you want my opinion on that, I mean, I could make a whole video on it or actually someone summarized it really, 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 really well. And I saved it. Long story short, they said, shout out to this person in the chat. They summarized my 10 minute rant into a paragraph. My basic take on this, just to kind of wrap up the video is uh, the, circula the circulating supply might be recalculated and it might exclude the OA wallets, but it's not necessarily a bad thing because it gives you a higher ceiling for people who don't understand market cap to buy because a lot of people are scared off by a high market cap thinking there's no more room to move up just because they don't understand markets. So it kind of resets the ceiling to be a little farther. And personally, I think even if the figures are changed to be only 173 billion circulating co coins as opposed to 573 billion, I think Hex can still flip ETH. I think Hex can still flip BTC. And it'll it'll just be that much more fun of a journey. And at the end of the day, if these market cap figures are adjusted, it doesn't change the price. It doesn't change the price of Hex. It doesn't change the, the amount in your portfolio. Fundamentally speaking, nothing changes. The only thing that changes is the two numbers that these ranking sites decide to multiply by each other to give you a... Uh, uh, um, a tag to sort by. So that is the video I've said, uh, I've closed out this video or attempted to like three times already, but that that's what it is. Appreciate you watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.